Hi, I'm State Representative Chad Magnetz. The legislature is in a special session now because we haven't yet agreed on a two-year state budget. One of the major sticking points in budget negotiations is how to increase funding for K-12 education in a way that satisfies the state Supreme Court's McCleary decision. A quick bit of background. In 2012, the Supreme Court ruled that the state of Washington is failing in its constitutional paramount duty to fully fund public schools. The essence of the McCleary ruling is that local school districts are paying for part of basic education when the state should be paying for all of it. And the primary driver for local district costs is teacher compensation. When I was on the ISCO school board, 83% of the budget was compensation. The cost of paying salaries vary with where you live in the state. For example, the median household income in King County is about $70,000 per year. In Whitman County in eastern Washington, it's $33,000 per year. So districts in higher cost of living areas have a heavier financial burden for paying salaries. In order to comply with McCleary, the state must take on the burden of compensation because it is part of basic education. A quick note on teacher pay. The Seattle Times has compared teacher salaries in various school districts with the median home values in those districts. The Times found that in the Issaquah, Lake Washington, and Bellevue school districts, teacher salaries were not sufficient to afford a home in those districts. That's why I support a local labor market adjustment, which would take into account the local cost of living when allocating state funds for teacher compensation. There's a bipartisan agreement on the fact that we need a significant increase in state funding of K-12 education. At the very least, we're looking at a total spending boost of nearly 18%, and that number could go higher in the final budget. It's important to remember this when you hear news of teacher walkouts across the state. Every single proposal includes an increase in teacher pay and an overall major increase in K-12 funding. Where some legislators disagree is on how we pay for these increases. The Senate Republican plan stays within current revenues. For months now, we've known that thanks to the recovering economy, the state will take in $3 billion more than the last budget cycle. Just a few days ago, however, we just got the great news that another $400 million on top of the $3 billion will come into state coffers. That's a revenue boost of more than 10%. On the other hand, Democrats in both the House and Senate want new and increased taxes. Between the two caucuses, they're suggesting a new capital gains tax, a new carbon tax, and hikes in certain business and occupation taxes. But with all the existing revenues we already have, it's less and less reasonable to push for new taxes. The simple fact is, we have enough dollars now. Even the governor has admitted that the $1.4 billion in new taxes he proposed early this year are not necessary. The funding mechanism I support, and which I'll discuss in detail in my next update, is local levy reform. Levy reform has bipartisan support. In fact, the House Appropriations Committee held a work session on it just this morning. It makes use of an already existing tax the property tax to address inequities in the current system. That's all for this week. Next time, we'll go more into detail on levy reform ideas. Thanks, and have a great day.